Hello and thank you for your invitation. I'm Dr. Roxana Maria Pintican and on behalf of my co-authors I would like to present you our paper entitled Nipple Ultrasound, a pictorial assay. The nipple is an intricate anatomic structure with unique characteristics when compared to other parts of the breast. From a histology point of view, it is comprised of lactiferous ducts lined by squamous epithelium, dense fibrostroma with smooth muscle tissue and sebaceous glands. Pathological processes of the nipple can arise from any of these structures. A correct nipple evaluation always starts with the patient's history and clinical examinations. A, main, a magnifying lamp is useful to inspect the nipple discharge as well as changes in nipple skin, shape, volume and symmetry. There might be nipple variations such as in this picture where we can see a supernumerary nipple located near right axilla along embryonic milk lines in consistence with polytelia. Don't forget about the changes that occur during pregnancy as in this picture where a darker areola and nipple with preeminent Montgomery glands might be seen due to lactation. Characteristically, a bilateral or long-standing nipple retraction is benign, while the presence of an acquired unilateral nipple retraction implies an underlying malignancy and should be evaluated with imaging techniques. Nipple skin changes such as erythema, ulceration, edema or satellite skin nodules might be as well encountered. Very important, nipple skin changes in patients with breast cancer have a prognostic importance as they function as indicators of upstage to locally advanced breast cancer, a stage T4B. The ultrasound assessment implies a linear high-frequency transducer. The nipple is always assessed bilaterally on axial and longitudinal scan planes. In the article, you can find inflammatory nipple lesion, benign and malignant tumors. Inflammatory and benign tumors commonly present as round or oval masses, isoechoic with circumscribed margins. Inflammatory lesion have a periductal vascularity or rim vessels and benign tumors show an internal vascularity. Malignant tumors are usually irregular hypoechoic masses with indistinct or speculated margins and sometimes shadowing might be present. Further, I will exemplify with cases selected from the paper. Case number one, nipple ductectasia in a patient presented with bloody nipple discharge. The ultrasound showed dilated ducts within the left nipple and the retroareolar space. The dilated ducts have a hyperintense signal on T1 weighted fat saturation non enhanced image consistent with blood products. No intraductal mass was noted on subtracted post enhanced T1 weighted sequence. We need to be careful because in some cases of a nipple ductectasia, we might found an intraductal mass, such as in this case of intracystic papilloma highlighted also on the MRI. Case number two, acute eczema of the nipple in a patient that presented with redness, small vesicles and pain in the left nipple areola complex. The ultrasound shows a thickened and vascularized skin compared to the contralateral side. The patient's symptoms improved after three weeks of topical application of steroid cream. Nipple abscess. The patient presents with right milky nipple discharge. Ultrasound shows a round, isoechoic and circumscribed mass with vessels in rim. On MRI, the mass is hyperintense on T2 with a complete rim enhancement on MIP image. The patient received antibiotics and a complete lesions resolution was noted after 10 days. Some rare benign nipple tumors, in case number four, a nipple leomyoma, in a patient that presented with nipple tenderness. The ultrasound reveals an oval hypoechoic circumscribed mass located within the nipple with acoustic enhancement and internal vascularity. 
The mass was also depicted on the MRI as a focus of enhancement. A fibroepithelial polyp of the nipple presented in a 25-year-old patient. Ultrasound shows the mass with a vascular pedicle, the mass with an intense enhancement on the MRI. Another rare nipple tumor, nipple adenoma, observed in a patient that presented with nipple erythema for six months. The ultrasound shows a round, isoechoic and circumscribed mass with internal vascularity. All of the above patients underwent surgery with the histology results being available. Nipple papilloma presented as a mass in a patient with a left palpable nipple nodule. The ultrasound shows an oval, isoechoic and circumscribed mass with internal vascularity. While the strain elastography has a limited value, the shear wave elastography revealed the mass stiffness. In the category of nipple malignancies, we have a case of nipple ductal carcinoma in situ. A, the patient presented with a bloody nipple discharge the ultrasound shows an irregular hypoechoic mass with indistinct margins and internal vascularity. After surgery, the histology reveals a papillary lesion inside the dialectic duct with areas of malignant transformation, a ductal carcinoma in situ, grade 2. Nipple invasive ductal carcinoma in a patient that presented also with a bloody nipple discharge. The ultrasound shows a dilated duct involving the nipple and the retroareolar region with hypoechoic content. The mammography excluded the presence of microcalcifications. An additional mass with suspicious characteristics was detected in the left outer quadrant of the same breast. The MRI identified both lesions that were later confirmed as invasive ductal carcinoma. Pages disease in a patient that presented with erosions and swollen right nipple. Ultrasound reveals a globally enlarged nipple with internal vascularity and the typical asymmetrical enhancement on the MRI. The punch biopsy confirmed the Pages disease of the nipple. In summary, all of the above mentioned pathologies are well summarized in ta table number two, where B mode and color Doppler features might be found, together with histologic features and treatment. In conclusion, the nipple may be affected by various benign and malignant pathologies, several of which have similar clinical and imaging presentations. Ultrasound is the first line imaging examination that help us to characterize and identify nipple lesions with a non-invasive and practical approach. Inflammatory lesions often display a peripheral vascularity, periductal or vessels in rim, while tumor masses show internal vascularity. An irregular hypoechoic mass with speculated margins and shadowing suggests the possibility of invasive carcinoma of the nipple, and ductal carcinoma in situ and benign tumors may have overlapping ultrasound features. Thank you very much for your invitation. For more details about nipple pathology and nipple ultrasound cases, please feel free to access the online version of the paper. Have a nice day.